Aloha everyone, welcome to Hawaii Abroad Audio Podcast. If you are interested in learning about Hawaii's culture and its people, then hit the subscribe button because you'll love it here at HAAP. Because this is a place where you can listen, learn, and understand Hawaii's people and its place. I'm your host, Auntie Max, and on this show, I release two episodes each week. Topics on Mondays, which I call Mana'o Monday, shares Hawaiian culture lessons. And on Fridays, which I call Aloha Friday, I highlight former Hawaii residents by talking story with them about their relocation journey and experiences. My goal is to share these stories so that we can learn about others and understand the different situations. Because the more we know, the more we grow. This episode is released on Aloha Friday, which means I have another interview to share. This time, I talk story with a special brave Kanaka that joined the Air Force and traveled to different areas of the Honua, or world. I'm going to allow him to introduce himself, give you some background of where he's from, and share his journey with us on living abroad. So, let's get started. Hui, aloha, Kimo. How are you today? Auntie, doing good, doing good. Aloha. My ka- aloha, my kai. Okay, let's get started. Um, can you share a little bit about yourself? Introduce yourself, share where you came from, where you originally came from, and where you are now, and maybe some about that journey and how you now became a resident in Georgia. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, so yeah, James Kimo Delapina, uh, born and raised on Oahu. Um, grew up in the Wailua Haleiwa, you know, area, North Shore, um, and uh, lived with my grandparents. Um, more of those formative years, those the intermediate high school years. Um, but uh, fast forward a little bit out of high school, made some adult decisions. You know, with me and my girlfriend and. Uh, put on some responsibility on myself with, with, with a new child. So I had to make a decision to take care. And uh, that, that I found my way into the military and uh, that was how I relocated off the Island. Um, and uh, you know, between high school and, and today now uh, I traveled all across the world, uh, been to Japan, been to Guam, been to Oklahoma, and even as far as Greenland Thule. Um And then all in between there was, you know, spats uh playing in the sandbox in the desert um but yeah so been in for in the air force for 16 years now um looking at another four years and calling it quits uh but yeah here i am today you know 2022 august in uh middle georgia wow what a journey what a journey so Because you left, and it's mostly because of military, you was in the Air Force, so that that relocation process, um, normally I ask to see how was that process, you know, what kind of services you might need and so on. But with the military, you go through the military and they help you with that relocation, yeah? Correct, yeah. So, yeah, the military will help you. I mean, you don't really get a say on where you go, you know. Um, you, you kind of get, you can put a list of where you want to go, your, your dream sheet, as they say. Uh, but really in the best interest of the military, they'll put you where, where you need it. And then, uh, you know, you kind of have to flourish, uh, wherever you're planted. Right. So, you know, that, that's probably the hardest thing for, I guess, a military member, you know, that, that gets taken off the Island is, you know, the, the unknowns that are out there and don't really have the decision to, you know, sometimes pick where they want to go. Yeah. So where was your first station where you went? Uh, so after after the basic stuff that, you know, we do basic training in Texas and we do, go to our technical school, which was in uh, Mississippi for me. But after that, my, my first duty station was in Yokota, Japan. Oh, wow. Um, and that was back in 2006. Yeah. And that's when your family get to join you? Yeah. So, yeah, I brought my family out there. Um young young guy you know i was maybe 19 years old uh 
a wife was 18 and, you know, we had a baby on the way or baby was already here, in matter of fact. So, you know, talk about culture shock and, you know, culture shock for me, it just, you know, oh, now I have a family and then now I'm in another country and, you know, I'm 19 years old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so majority of the time when you was in Japan, um, you're probably with the Americans and speaking English, but you eventually had to start learning the language of the land, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that's kind of one of the, the training things you go through when you first integrate into the community, into the base. You know, they, they, they teach you, you know, the basic customs and courtesies, right? Uh, but lucky, you know, being from Hawaii, you know, and uh, Hawaii being the, the melting pot it is, you know, Japanese culture wasn't foreign to me. So it was an easy transition, right, for me and the family. Um, so, you know, we had plenty of friends, family that, that, that could help us out. You know, we was already introduced to the food. The food was, was not a problem. It was a blessing for us. Um, and in the military, you know, especially being overseas like that, a lot of your groups, a lot of your Americans will come together naturally uh, because it is foreign outside those gates. And then more importantly, a lot of the islanders, and you can see them, you know, you, you drive them on the road, you see the Hawaii stickers on the car. So, you know, it was, it was easy to spot them out and, you know, give them the head nod or the shaka and then, hey, you know, instant instant family, you know, you, you instant ohana you, you make out there. Uh, so, you know, the first couple of weeks maybe was, was hard, but when you, we already know the culture somewhat from what our upbringing and then being able to pick up the islanders on in foreign lands like that, you know, it, it, it was easy some, somewhat, I would say, you know. Uh, yeah. Being away from family was kind of hard, the, the initial shock of that. Yeah, especially with uh, the Kanakas. We are very family-oriented, so it's hard to be away from the oh. Ohana, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you went to Japan, you went to Guam, right? Greenland, you said. How is right. that culture over there? I mean, you just said that you was kind of going through a little culture shock in the beginning in Japan. That happened in other areas, too? After Japan, getting used to that, um, we kind of developed a, uh, hey, this is the military life. This is, you know, we had the expectation. So it wasn't a surprise when we moved to to other areas, you know. It's okay, hey, we know the process. It, it's going to feel a little weird, but we know we just got to be open, you know. You know, we showed aloha, you know, and then being so respectful and stuff, you know, people are just more, we're very open. So people are more welcoming to come and let us in. So, you know, the Chamorro people when we was in Guam, I mean, it's like a little Hawaii, you know, very family oriented uh, people. The culture is very similar to us. You know, they, they, they're they a mix of Spanish, Filipino food and customs and courtesies and stuff like that. So Chamorro, uh, when I was in Guam, it, it was easy. I was like, oh, I'm back home almost, you know. It really was going back to the States when, when I was in Oklahoma was like another culture shock oh. for us. Yeah, not saying that the, America was was bad or anything, but you you come from Japan where everything is respectfulness and you know work ethic is a little different down there. You know, hard workers out there, um, Guam the same way. Um, America, you know, Oklahoma is the same way too. But we had to deal with a lot of uh, how you say this. Uh, you could see the different segregations. You know, you, you you hear it on the news about the racism kind of stuff and. Which for Hawaii, you know, Hawaii people, you know, melting pot. So we we don't notice it or the kind of stuff that people say is an issue. You know, it's not prevalent to us in Hawaii because, you know, my family is black, white, purple, yellow, all yep. the colors of the rainbow, yep. you know. And, you know, I get family that is, you know, same sex. All, you know, all all walks of life, you know. But that that was never an issue for me. But I came to the States, it was... A lot more people had issues and a lot more people let it known that it was issues, you know, and that was something I had to, you know, I, I respected opinions, but, you know, I found that a lot of the views weren't aligned with what me and my family kind of uh, um, saw, you know, and that, that wasn't everybody. It was just I saw it more, you know, coming back to the States. Yeah. Wow. That is really interesting, Kimo. Uh, it seems like when we go, when people go 
internationally they're embraced more than the main land the mainland pretty much <laughs> especially where you yeah, was yeah 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 that's interesting to hear wow but um i'm glad you guys made it through it you guys are okay now um you're in georgia not oklahoma okay. anymore <laughs> no yeah 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 georgia now yeah uh well since we were talking about culture i'm just wondering um how is your hawaiian culture how are you guys able are you guys able to perpetuate any part of the culture, especially since you you did say you was being raised by your grandparents, which, yeah, grandparents, they have a lot of experience under their belt, yeah, and a lot mm-hmm. of knowledge, especially when it comes to the culture. So my cut you. But oh, yeah. are you able to perpetuate anything? I did hear that you, you try to share the aloha spirit. So is there anything else? How are you able to perpetuate yeah, that, that so yeah, definitely, you know, the the low spirit and that's just, you know, through action every day, you know, everyday life with the people I work with and the community that I'm around. Um, you know, just being opening and welcome, you know, just say hi to everybody, you know, that kind of stuff. And you know, they they can tell by the clothes I wear and the, the mannerisms I make. Uh they are hey, you from you from Hawaii, you know? Uh, so I think whenever I, I do that, just by, you know, them looking at how I, how I act and they assume that I'm from Hawaii, it makes me feel good because like, oh, this, they, they know what a Hawaiian culture is, you know, by how helpful we are, you know, inviting people to come paina with us, you know, party with us in, in the back of the house, don't have a big backyard, but, you know, we make it work. I get, you know, food, food is one thing we're trying to, you know, I try to share. You know, so lao lao's kind of hard finding ingredients sometimes, you know, right. a little leaf. Right. But, uh, you know, one thing I would say is, you know, find the, f- wherever you guys go for all the listeners out there, find the nearest Asian Mart and uh, they'll be able to find you a- a- anything you need. Uh, but, yeah, making making the food, you know, and then like uh, Brother Che you know, you had on the podcast a little while ago. He yes, yes. he got one mini mini loi patch in his yard. I didn't know it was possible, but he he made one. So I mean, you got to do it seasonally. So he he's gonna go cut me some 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 uh, taro and uh, help me plant one in the back of my yard. So maybe I can get that going with him. Gee who uh, right oh, on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, what else? And you know. My, Kind of you know, just the basic take care what you can take care of, you know, respect the not just the people but your surroundings, your environment. Yes. You know, pick up trash. Easy kind of simple stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um my cut. But yeah. That's awesome, Kimo. My my cutie, my cutie. Well, um, so you're in the military. Are you being relocated or away from Hawaii plans? to be temporary or permanent, you know, once you get out, do you have plans on what's happening? You know what? Uh, I will say this. I, I, I always had intentions to go back home. Uh, I never planned on staying in the military as long as I had. It was going to be a six-year thing and, and, and go back home. But kind of developing the relationships I had in the military and what the military has been able to provide for my family as far as you know security and financial stability and then you know like like i said you know being able to venture the world and and be accustomed to other cultures and how our cultures and, and other cultures are, are similar and also different in, in in good ways i don't know if i if i go back home anytime soon uh, i think there's a lot out there to to still see you know i have four years in, left in the military and with the way the market is back home as far as houses and stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Auntie. We have still a lot of family out there in, in, in Hawaii. They own houses. So if any of them, like, uh, give me their house, then maybe I, I, I'll go back home in an instant. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for the Delapina family, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we just kind of take one day at a time and come with me. We make the best of it. Right. Yeah, that that location, where are you going to live if you went back to Hawaii? That's like the biggest issue. Um, 
and the biggest mm-hmm. funds that you need, just your location, where you're going to live, right? And then, yeah, everything's yeah. pretty much yeah. really expensive in Hawaii. So I get you. I get you. But it does well, seem like yeah, you guys yeah. are doing great wherever you're, where you are right now. I mean, the important thing is the ohana, being together, yeah? Raising Definitely. them together. That is important. Yep. So regardless of where you live, mm-hmm. Hawaii will always be there. Yep. Uh, how often do you guys go home and visit? Oh, oh we go oh, almost uh, every year, almost. Almost we try nice. to. So that's one of the good things uh, with, with being a part of the military. We uh, Especially when I was in the Pacific, in, in Japan and Guam, we take just military planes, you know, for free. So we just fly back home uh my wife and kids would always go home and leave me at my base you know they, they can they, they would fly for free so why not take advantage so uh yeah. being here on the east coast now a um, little bit more hard a little bit more expensive to fly uh out there but you know so now we're getting the family to come fly and visit us uh you know so i can share you know we, we share share the east coast you know i yeah, we, we we like to stay in our, our shells. Like I said, I used to be the, the guy that was, oh, I don't like leave the island. I like stay here on this sand and in this water um, and, and you know, cover my eyes to what was outside the outside of the uh, our little shell, our little home. Uh, but, I you know, I invite my family to to come out and, you know, see what's out around the world, you know, because sometimes it it will open your eyes and make you more appreciative of what you got in back in Hawaii, you know? Uh, but also, you know, just, just see, see what other people are made of, you know, come out here. I totally agree, Kimo. Yes. We need to get out. We need to see the world. We need to, you know, gain yeah. some experience under our belt and then, yeah, appreciate what we do have. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, definitely. My kai. Definitely. Yeah. Um, how old are you, your children? They're in school already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my oldest, he, he's a sophomore. Um, he, he can be 16 here wow. in a couple months. My daughter, she's uh, seventh grade. She just turned 12 in July. And then my youngest that was running around over here, he was, uh, he's six. Uh, he just started first grade. Wow. So it's good. Very good. School started. School started for us uh, here this past Monday. So oh, okay. uh, having them cooped up in the house, <laughs> they, they needed to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason why I ask yeah. is because I, I like to hear some comparison between things of where you guys are compared to Hawaii. And I was just wondering about mm-hmm. the school system, you know, compared to how you grew up in Hawaii in your school system and what they're going through. What What are some of the comparisons? Uh, for school system, uh, you know what, Anki, I, I tell you this, they, they give me homework to help them with, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you that much. Uh, so <laughs> Matt is, you know, they, they get a different school system going on now. Everything's digital. They, everyone coming home with computers now they, they, they can work on. Mm-hmm. And that might be the same for Hawaii, but... You know, as far as curriculum goes, you know, the, you know, talk about history and stuff, you know, Hawaii mandatory, you know, you got, uh, history, Hawaiian history. Um, over here, we kind of just, they grow up um, getting taught, you know, whatever history is in required for that region, right? So right now, you know, they, they're they learning, you know, more civil uh, American history, you know, the, the Southern history, you know, history of Georgia. Um, when, when my kids was in Japan or when my oldest was in Japan, it was more, you know, Japanese culture and U S Japanese relations kind of history. Uh, so it's all based on, you know, where we go. So that, that's where, you know, me and mom, we've got to kind of come together and try to teach as much as we know about our own culture, yes, yes. you know, um, as best we can. Yes. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the school system, I, I cannot say if it's better or not better because, I mean, I'm a, I'm a simple guy. So any any homework they bring is, <laughs> is, is too much for me. Already. 
<laughs> Just tell them, ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, um, just to let you rest assured about when it comes to the school system, because I was um, in the school system working as a technology teacher mm -hmm. actually for 15 years. And, you know, just, yeah, the student, no matter where they are, they're learning different compared to when we was in school. In fact, I, wa I, yeah. I remember going to a few workshops about, especially math and English, the way they teach it is different. You have to go through different steps compared to what we went through, but we all get the same question and the same answer. It's just the steps is all different. So, so no worry. It's okay that, that you cannot do it with them. <laughs> that, that was, that was the biggest one for me was the, you know, number plus number equals this. Oh, it's easy. And then, you know, no, that's not how you do it, dad. You gotta yeah. draw circles and lines and, Cross them out, like, oh boy, yeah, yeah, I, I know can do that, but, but we come out with the same answer, right? It's so cool, cool yeah, swear. same answer, <laughs> yeah, but hey, you know, it's got, I guess, there's a, a, a reason to the crazy, so right, right, right. <laughs> figure it out. Is there yeah. any other comparison that you that you notice when it comes from Hawaii and how things are done, maybe in the mainland or any other? area that you've been through like you know the food or the traffic or you know any type of comparison that you can share about the comparisons from back home to to here ah i see you know they uh down here especially in the in the south uh you know, it's not called alo uh, aloha down here, but it's you know the the, the southern uh, southern charm and you know the, the uh, southern love. They very very family oriented people down here. You know, uh, they love their food. They love to party, and you know that that's a, that's one thing I actually I seen across the way. You know, they how they love each other, especially family. You know, it's same it's same and different. I guess I don't. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. You know, we, it does. But yeah, they, they they got their own own sayings that, that they that they say to each other that that means the same. Like when we give honies, you know, they they're the same way with their their hugs and kisses down here. Nice, um, nice to hear. I, I, I I've seen it. Uh, everyone is auntie and uncle down here. I, I, that's one thing I. I uh, I, I've gotten my community around here to start saying like all the kids that come around here. <laughs> right on. And and uncles. <laughs> and, there you go. Uh, and they and they they, they 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 love it. And you know, I get a couple of my um, mainland friends. They they love it when uh, 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 my kids call them that, and they get their kids calling us uncles and aunties now. Oh, you know? right on. Um, yeah, I've noticed when it comes to that, I. I had to get used to, to it whenever I was in the mainland because it's all about sir and ma'am. And I'm like, okay, I'm just so used to auntie and uncle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very respectful, yeah. You know, respect, you know, respect is big down here in Georgia, just like home. Just the outgoing respect for everything. So it's good. I mean, you, you get those, you, you hear that? That's the cicadas. Or it's, yeah, it's hear something it. loud over here. Oh, okay. Sorry, no, no worries. Yeah, all kind, all kind of critters. That's one. That's one thing. Uh, the mainland uh, has, has that I don't like. Uh, is a lot more critters over here uh, than Hawaii. So, uh, if if I can get rid of all those spiders and crazy insects that it that that roam roam Georgia, you know. Oh, that's interesting. That's one thing that. that I was wondering if that was yeah. a snake next to you or something. I was like, what is that? <laughs> oh, they 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 have them. They have that. Oh, that's one thing I'll say. They got the the, the wildlife and the the things out here. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh no, I can deal with I can deal with the mongoose and the you know all, all the, the stuff geckos we get at home. Way, but <laughs> the geckos, yeah, I see, yeah, the geckos. They get all kind of stuff over here. That, oh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, could you share with us? Let's let's redirect back to home in Hawaii. Could you share with us a little bit of your fond memories that you might have from growing up in Hawaii? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, 
one of my more constant memories, the kind of day in, day out life I used to have growing up in Hawaii was working in the yard with, with my grandfather. Big man, you know, bad knees, big man, worked all his life, but he always found the time to to go out, take care of his his yard. His yard was uh, the top yard in, in Kukea Circle in, in Wailua. Um, big, beautiful plumier tree, all kind of bushes, big hib- hibiscus bush in the yard. Everything was upkeep, but he would use one old stick to, to dig the, you know, to plow the ground. And being young and, and full of life, he would employ my help, you know, take my help. And he would, he would work me to the bone, me and my cousins all the time. We, every Saturday, we, he give us the chance to watch our Saturday morning cartoons. And then, you know, we'd be out there in the, in the yard working with him, um, just taking care of the land and, you know, making it nice and pretty every, every weekend, you know, uh, my grandfather just passed a little while ago, well, not a little while ago, a couple years ago. Uh, but, Big, big part of my life, teach us how to, to make poi, you know, he have all his pohaku stones, you know, out there. And every time we had a big party, graduation party, make poi, make lomi salmon, you know, our, our house was always brimming with life. You know, my, my grandfather, my grandmother we was always cooking and, you know, kani kapila on the weekends with all my uncles. Unfortunately, I, I didn't come out with with any musical talent but i had all my uncles and my cousins that could so i just you know pretend i could sing and you know just sing quietly just those those weekends where we just party and all the family come from Y9, Nankuli, Y Pau, all over just coming down on the weekend um playing cards playing paiute pipito a couple old timers banging on spoons and on string and one steel drum you know all kind of just it was just good time, you know, life. All the cousins running around playing tag on the street. Oh, man, it was, it was good stuff. And that's, I guess that would be the biggest thing I miss here is that kind of environment, you know. That, that That's something you I don't think you really can replicate anywhere outside of Hawaii. I used to work, you know, one of my other fondest memories was uh, a lot of my family worked at Waimea Falls Park. So my family still work over there. But I remember that was one of my first jobs, me and my cousin Kael back in, uh, I don't know, maybe he was seven, eight years old, but. Uh, all our family worked there, so I guess you could say we had uh, some some clout so, <laughs> down there. But we they would dress us up, you know. Uh, we'd wear our 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 tili, um skirts and you'd paint us up, and we'd take the conch shell and we'd just blow the conch shell as the tourists would go in the trams throughout the Waimea Valley. And then I say it's our first job because. We do it, and then all the Japanese on the tram, they see us, two little kids blowing the conch shell, and they'd all throw us money. So it's, oh, stop blowing the conch shell, and then we'd run, pick up money. <laughs> and then, we, you know, we'd teach the tourists how to play, like, ulumaika or, you know, throw spears. Uh, we, you know, lahala la baskets, you know, mats, and, and just, yeah, doing that, you know, trying to teach tourists at a young age. And it was good. It was it was something that... I loved, I enjoyed, you know, I miss it too. You know, I, I, I miss that. Uh, wow. You know, just, you know, running around barefoot. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what fun memories. I love that. That is awesome memories that you was able to make. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Definitely. nice. Definitely ones that I, I never going to forget. It was good times. My cutie, my cutie. Well, mm-hmm. when you were sharing about your papa teaching you, you know, having you in the yard. I was just thinking, oh, good. So when Shay brings over that Carlo and you guys start the garden, you know exactly what to do, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I know, I know how, I know how to work hard and sweat and 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 dig holes and yeah, I know how to do all that. <laughs> you say I get one green thumb? Oh, I don't know if you know that. That uh, I was the 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 labor. Oh. You know, the bulldozer. Huh? Make sure my grandpa <laughs> never has to work too hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I love yeah. those fond memories. That was so awesome. Yeah. Well, I really, really enjoyed talking story with you, Kimo. Um, I was wondering bef- oh, yeah, definitely. before we close today, um, do you have any 
message that you would like to share with our audience, especially those that, you know, contemplating on relocating or even did relocate already. If you have any message to go to them about, you know, you being a Hawaiian living abroad now, and maybe people might be doing that. So what kind of message would you like to share? Oh, yeah. I, uh, how much time we get into ah! that? joking. Uh, <laughs> for for all, all the, the brothers and sisters um, relocating in process or, or thinking about it, either by, you know, by choice or by decisions outside of their control. Uh, all I say is, you know, I, I tell this to even my, my, my folks that I work with. Wherever you go, you you know, God put you there for a purpose, you know, bloom where you're planted and bring your culture with you because I can tell you what, it's going to open a lot of doors um, for you, just the way we are as a people, being respectful, open-hearted, you know, that Aloha spirit, you know, a lot of more people are more willing to come and help and uh, make your transition a lot more easier when, when, when we perpetuate that Aloha spirit and, you know. Uh, and, and people can truly see that, and, and, and honestly, people love it, and you know, other people want to be a part of it. And once once you once you get that down, you know, life will be easy wherever you're at, and enjoy adventure. You know, check it out. And like I said earlier, find find the find the nearest Asian mart or local mart you can, uh, so you can get all your ingredients to make your food. What a wonderful message! Thank you, Kimo. I love it. You know, the the world could always use more aloha, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. awesome. I love that message that you have. And yeah, experiencing the world. I mean, the school of life, right? <laughs> Just Definitely, yes, yes. Yeah, I love that message. So thank you so much. I want to thank you very much for being part of this podcast. And I am so proud of you for being a great representative of Hawaii, taking that Aloha spirit out showing everybody what us Kanaka are about and, you know, just supporting your ohana. So, my Kai, you're so brave. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Max, for having me. All you guys out there, aloha. Aloha. Mahalo, mahalo. So, there you have it, gang. Kimo is another brave Kanaka out there in the big world doing his thing. What a way to represent our homeland of Hawaii by protecting and supporting it. I'm so proud of him, and I wish Kimo and his ohana the very best. Well, we've come to the end of another session. I hope you found value in today's episode. If you did, please share it with your family and friends. And of course, before you leave, make sure you subscribe so that you can get early notifications whenever an episode is released. And please leave me a feedback either on your favorite podcast app or on my social media accounts, which is under Hawaii Abroad. I hope you have a My Kai week and hope you tune in again here at Hawaii Abroad Audio Podcast. This is Auntie Max signing out. Aloha!